Hello friends! Today I want to talk about books like the biggest surprises and the biggest disappointments of year 2022 book-wise. Um, as I never did this video before, I want to make a disclaimer first that disappointing books are not bad. Uh, actually, we have few four stars here, few three stars, so uh, they just worse than I expected them to be. Uh, maybe I went to a book, wanted it to be all-time new favorite and I thought that it can be because some booktubers or just you know my friends that read it recommended it to me and I have similar taste and I thought that I will like it but this love didn't happen uh, and uh, vice versa. Surprising books are not good books. Uh, they are just books that I didn't expect something big from them uh, and something big happened. I like them. Again, I have one three star in here, so these are not my favorite books of the year or not all of them. Uh, they, I was just surprised by them and they were unexpectedly good for me. Uh, as well as if I thought that the book would be amazing and it was amazing, this book would not be in this video because it didn't surprise me. And as well as if I knew nothing about the book and it was a disappointment, again it, it would not be in this video because I have no expectations or I had low expectations and uh, I was wise to have these low expectations. So um, yeah. Uh, these are books that were unexpected for me, unexpectedly good or unexpectedly disappointing, okay? Uh, and I uh, decided to start with surprisingly good books. I do not have all of them, so I will show you some um, covers here. But first of these books I actually just bought. I need to do uh, my video about how I buy books and how do I spend money for it. But like in general, I only buy books that I've read and loved or uh, the ones that I can't read in any other way. So I can't get them as an audiobook, I can't get them in the library, I have no friends from whom I can get it and read it. Uh, the only way they can, uh, that I can read them and I really need to read them is to buy them, then I buy them. But this book I took from the library, I loved it and now I bought it. Uh, this is Olga by Bernhard Schlink. Uh, this was uh, the most surprising books of the, book of the year and it just went to my best books of the year. Um, I took this book from the library because of its title. My daughter's name is Olga, uh, the title of the book is Olga and I was just curious. And it is, it's not book for everyone. I would not recommend to pick it up like everyone need to read this book, no. This is very quiet book about the war and about the place of women in society and about um, just very quiet life. And I loved this book. This is a book about women who had ambition but couldn't fulfill them and about a man whom she loved and who also had ambition but he, had not, he hadn't strength to uh, live up to this ambition. And uh, this is about her very quiet life but still very meaningful that went down in history because uh, the worlds are, were clashing around and because the, you know, there was a war and lots of people just, their lives just vanished and so did hers. And uh, I really liked how quiet this book was but how uh, on the point and uh, I can't not to think about all these people whose lives are broken by the war. I loved this book. Uh, I can't recommend it to everyone, but those who, for example, liked Dutch House by Anne Patchett, I think can try this book and let me think, let me know what you think about it, because it's similar tone about quiet lives, um, but still very important lives of everyday people whom you see on the streets and knew nothing about them. 
Um, yeah, highly recommend, was very surprised by it. Here you go. Another book that I was very surprised and I have, actually these are the only two books I have, um, is Emily of Deep Valley by Maud Hart Lovelace. I gave it again five stars. This was a book from Kindred Spirits Club of uh, Kate Howe. Uh, this is one of the few books I've read for this club, book club, but I loved this book dearly. This is again about a book about very quiet life, about a young girl. This is uh, a book uh, taking place in the same like world, in the same village as Betsy Tacy series. I haven't read those, but I uh, have them in my plans to 2023. Emily of Deep Valley is about a girl who just finished high school and she can't go to college because she needs to ca take care of her uh, granddad with whom she is living. She is an orphan. He's uh, her only relative and she takes really good care of him. She makes company and uh, you know she's like housewife um, and still she wants to do something in life. She was a brilliant student and uh, now she can't fulfill her uh, ambition and then uh, she found herself in this small village and she found very important things that she can do for the community. Uh, this is the book about you know um, bloom where you were planted and uh, I really like this concept, I believe in it and I think this is a wonderful, very heartwarming book. Um, loved it, uh, gave it five stars. Definitely want to read more from this author because um, this is a kind of literature I really um, haven't read much in my adult years but I just loved, loved when I was a young adult. And uh, yeah, uh, wonderful book, highly recommend. Um, then I have a um, few books that I do not have, I took them from the library. And first of them is the series that I haven't told on this channel, though I highly recommend and think it's very fun. I read it for Jane Austen July and it was Secret Life of Miss Mary Bennett. Uh, this book was written by Kathleen Cowley and this is the first in the series, now we have three books in this series. Uh, this is a retelling of Pride and Prejudice, well actually after the um, things happened in Pride and Prejudice, uh, from the point of view of Mary Bennett. Uh, and uh, uh, this is a mystery novel actually and a mystery series, I'd say adventurous mystery series and it has a fun characters, I loved it dearly. Um, to give you a hint what happened to Mary later, uh, the second book of the series named The True Confessions of a London Spy. Um, so why she sit, sat near the bed of uh, near the dead Mr. Uh, Bennett because he died in the first pages of this book uh, and uh, at night she was she sat near him and uh, some strange visitors came uh, it was an old lady very noble and her nephew who claimed that they uh, knew mr bennett in his younger ages and uh, um, they get to know mary they talk to her and uh, then later uh, they proposed to her to spend some time in their mansion uh, to train to be a governess uh, she wants to do with her life something, she doesn't want to stay with her mother and we all understand why. So she went there and she tried, um, she, she is beginning her training. But her training actually not to be a governess but to be something else. And uh, it tells a lot about uh, interesting things I haven't, didn't know from that time. Uh, like you know secret letters and how to um, fold the letter so no one can open it without knowing how to open it and all this interesting stuff. Um, I do think it's a little bit maybe too adventurous but still it's a very very fun uh, historical mystery with a fun known to us characters and I like to have this new age to Meryl's life and I actually really looking forward to return to this series later this year. So yes, highly recommend. It was The Secret Life of Miss Mary Bennett. This is mystery series 
uh, a retelling of Jane Austen, Pride and Prejudice. Highly, highly recommend it. It was a great fun. Uh, another surprising book um, I actually told about uh, in my videos. This is a middle grade, We Are the Song by Catherine Bakewell. Uh, this is not a perfect book. I gave it three stars. Um, but I think it's a unique middle grade fantasy. I haven't read anything like that. And I wanted a little bit more people to know about this because I really think that we need this variation in our middle grade books these days. Uh, this is a story that takes place in uh, middle age Italy, but a fantasy land. And our main protagonist is a girl who is, um, she can sing. And he, she is a voice of the goddess of this land. And when she sings a song, miracles happened. So people become healthy, uh, the rain stops, the crop blooms and all this stuff. And she's traveling with her composer, a young man who uh, works with her. And he writes songs for the need of people and she sings them to provide a miracle for a goddess. They're like um, traveling, miracle giving thing. And then one day they went to this nobleman in one of the villages and something went wrong with the song. And then became a game of ambition. This is a book about uh, you have um, a gift, so choose wisely how to use it. Uh, also, this is a book about uh, think before making a wish. If it will come true, will you be really happy or not? Um, I think it's interestingly done. It's unusual setting. It's very unusual characters. I actually liked it. Uh, it was a little bit too dark on my taste. Uh, there is like uh, medieval things happening and it was a little bit too much for my daughter. But I think that for older middle grades, it's something very unique and worth your attention. The last uh, actually series I want to talk about uh, was Inspector Jan Ratlich series. Um, I will be talking about these books in my year wrap up. Uh, they became one of my favorite uh, mystery series this year. And the one in particular which surprised me the most was uh, Search the Dark. This is the third volume in this series. Inspector Jan Ratlich series takes place just after World War I. I don't like everything about this series. There are aspects that uh, disturbs me a lot. It is... Uh, um, a lot of going on in terms of mental health in these books and Inspector Jan Ratlich has this uh, voice in his head to him he is talking. Like an imaginary, not friend, but imaginary um, antagonist to whom he talks all the time. It uh, linked to his past on the front. I would not tell you about this right now, but uh, this disturbs me and uh, took my attention from the plot. And I can't say that I love this series because of this aspect. They disturbs me. But uh, the series in the whole and this particular book like gave to me a lot of thoughts about of aftermath of the war, of every war, and especially of World War I, because that's what we're talking about. And uh, The Search in the Dark is a very interesting book when um, it begins like uh, uh, there is a soldier who uh, he was a soldier in the war, now he's trying to find a work and he's traveling uh, on the train and he saw uh, on the station his wife and two children whom he thought were dead. And uh, he uh, jumped out from the train on the next station, returned to this town, tried to find uh, his wife, but couldn't. He went to every house and asked questions, have you seen her, what do you know about her? And then they found a very uh, similar looking woman uh, murdered 
in the fields nearby and he was just sleeping near the tree in other part of the town. So they thought that he is guilty and the main uh, question is where are the kids? Because no one saw the kids and if he killed his wife what have he done to the kids? And Inspector Jan Ratlich needs to uh, investigate this but the thing is that very quickly like maybe 30 pages in uh, his investigation went to completely different direction and uh, um, it is not about this man and his wife it is about different people in living nearby in the mansion and uh, um, then it became you know like closed circle mystery Agatha Christie wise but also with interesting characters and interesting topics I thought because it turned like 90% in the middle like you know it turned backwards or somewhere and I like this turn and uh, I yeah can't recommend it enough I think it's a wonderful book and you actually do not need to read previous books to read this so maybe start with it I liked it very much uh, now up to disappointing books now uh, I want uh, first to say I am sorry for everyone who will get upset because of this list because for example one of my most disappointing books of the year is one of my um, favorite youtuber favorite this year and I was I was thinking not to do this video but then I decided that it's okay we can have different opinions and I gave this book actually four stars so it was a good book for me but it was a disappointing because I thought it would be a five star read and I have actually two books of this kind on this list so they are four stars for me but I definitely thought that they will be all-time favorites and I failed maybe I failed in understanding something maybe I failed in my attitude because this year was definitely strange and I can say that my attitude was not that straightforward that it was before and I have no idea about my taste now or what disturbs me, trigger warnings, all the things. So the first book on this list uh, will be um, North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. Uh, this was this is a classic a Victorian classic I read it during October I thought it would be my favorite Victorian literature of all time again because of Kate Howe because this is one of her favorite authors Victorian authors and this was my first Elizabeth Gaskell I actually watched a movie a few times ago TV adaptation and I loved it I can't say even why I didn't like this book that much but I didn't like the love story in it and it's a huge chunk of the book and uh, the main protagonist annoyed me a lot maybe not all the time but a lot and uh, uh, it was hard to read for me because of that I didn't root for her, them to be together um, but I like this book because of her sociological topics political topics it was interesting slice of life of that time period it was very different interesting um, you know description of town life and uh, uh, what's the difference between industrial city and rural village it was interesting engaging but I didn't love it because I d really do not think that they do not have to be together like they do not mate to each other and they will be not happy together but again <laughs> it's it's my thoughts and uh, it's okay I was just a little bit disappointed uh, but still I want to read more Elizabeth Gaskell and will try more next year the second book it was even more disappointing for me it is Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett I know this is a very beloved book and this one was a favorite book of my one of my favorite booktubers this the same year uh, I gave this book four stars uh, it was a little bit too violent for me a little bit soap opera-ish like all these people have these unbelievable relationships between each other they fall in love instantly and for the whole life they go uh, on their foot to another country and they find each other in medieval England and France which for me is absolutely unbelievable 
There were few rape scenes, very um, descriptive in this book, and I don't think uh, they were important to the plot. I have no idea why author choose to be that descriptive in these scenes. I think this is a huge trigger warning, and also um, for me, <coughs> death in, in the birth bed is a huge trigger warning because it was something I almost experienced in my own life. And uh, um, there is a scene at the very beginning, again, very descriptive about um, death on the, during giving birth. And it was a huge no for me. And I draw, pushed later to this book and tried to like these characters. I was still um, mad at them because of some decisions that they made during this scene and just after that. Um, I can't say I love this book, though I understand why it is interesting and engaging and it's a lot, it's a big book with interesting characters, very vivid, very unusual. Uh, it's a slice of life uh, from the um, cathedral builders about, uh, you know, uh, people of religion and about just medieval England and how people lived there and how they, you know, um, make love there, how they make families, how they uh, make money and all this stuff. It was interesting and it's a huge book. I read it relatively quickly. I can recommend it actually. But I didn't love it and it was disappointed for, disappointing for me and I definitely, I can't say that I really want to read something else from Ken Follett because now I can't, uh, I don't feel safe in his arms. I can expect a lot of violence from him and I definitely do not need this in my books right now. Um, then, uh, the next book that I was disappointed in was uh, The Watchmaker of the Filigran Street by Natasha Pulley. Actually, I was very excited about reading this book because of Katie from Books and Things. This is one of her favorite books and I thought it would be amazing because actually my taste is very close to Katie's, I think so, um, but I just didn't like it. This is like a steampunk fantasy novel. It's not a historical fiction, it's more like fantasy. Um, there is uh, automatons in there, there is like a mechanical octopus, uh, which come alive somehow and there is this uh, watchmaker who is a little bit like a wizard, wizard a little bit time traveler, a, a little bit he, which he can, he, he can do things that other people can, can't do. And uh, though it was interesting and I liked actually very much the world, uh, I uh, did not like the relationships between characters. There is uh, LGBT plus uh, relationships in here and I am all here for it. But in this book it was described as it stands on the place where young man and woman could be together if not this other man. And also this other man played like a mastermind. He used other people like a puppets in his game and I don't think it's actually a good LGBT plus relationships described in there. It's not a um, um, fair description and uh, I wonder why this was done in this way. Um, I was disappointed in this book. I actually gave it two stars. I didn't like it and now I am cautious about reading more Natasha Pulley book because I just uh, can't say that I liked the characters, though the world building was actually very good. Um, another book I think will be in most um, disappointing uh, lists this year is Across the Lake by House Across the Lake uh, by Riley Sager. Uh, Riley Sager is not my favorite author by far but uh, I enjoyed his last t three books uh, some more than others because uh, I liked this tiny balance that every time 
you are thinking is there a ghost or something supernatural or is it a mystery or is it you know someone some person doing things and all the time in all books at the very end it shifted to the place i like to, to, to shift to shift but this play this time it shifted to another to another part of this and uh, it unbalanced this book for me it made it for me not exciting not interesting i actually did not enjoy it, reading it at all i think it was ridiculous because of this choice that author made this time i will try to read more Riley Sager in the future because this is something that actually this is this stupid thriller that i read every summer and actually enjoy so um yeah uh this was disappointing this year and the last book um again is very controversial and it is uh like this is a book from my book club and this year i had a very bad experience with book club i um picked up most of the books that my book club read uh physical book club and i dnf'd them almost uh, each of them i finished only two books and those two both were two stars for me and uh, i I have no idea will I even try to read any books for my book club in the future because we definitely went in different directions this year. This is one of these books and this is The Poisonwood Bible by Barbara Kingsover. Um, I know this is a very beloved book. It was very popular and actually it uh, won a Pulitzer Prize I think and a lot of girls in my book club this book became their favorite of the year and I just hated this book and I have no idea what happened. Is it something in me or is it truly the type of the book that I didn't like? The thing I didn't like in this book, um, like two main things. First, uh, this is a book about Africa telling from the point of view of white girls, white women, um, their um, wife and daughters of one priest who came to Africa to um, tell people there about God, like a missionary, but he uh, was a very bad priest and bad missionary and he failed his mission and he fails all his family and uh, they um, had some terrible experiences during their life there. Um, this is book, like I thought it was book written for white people. They told about Africa the way they you can read in a um, travel guide and I did not appreciate this. Uh, as I understood Barbara King Solver wasn't in Africa during time when she wrote this book. She was there when she was very small. So it was told from the books and from her friends' experiences and I could feel it. It was not true. It was like a story you read again in the travel guide or in a travel magazine. And from the other side, this book is written in few points of view, uh, different women. And I tr started to listen to the audiobook and then I, I didn't realize that there were several women. And then I began to read it because I thought it would be easier for me. And again, I could not uh, divide all this monologue into, you know, different monologues of different women. I don't think that the author did a good job of separating the, their voices. And I didn't enjoy this. I just fairly did not enjoy this book at all. And uh, uh, it is a bu big book with big problems, with big like life situations. And I can't say that it was well done for me. Too, too many words, too um, small amount of experience, no heart in there. And also what was strange for me actually in two books in here, both in Pillars of the Earth and in Poisonwood Bible, these both are books about religious people, but there is no faith in both of these books. People never talk about God in true. They never feel the God. They never put it in their thoughts 
and it, they never measure their life or the situations they live through through the faith. There is no faith in them. And it was strange for me because authors, you know, wrote these characters and I think it made them not believable. I'm sorry I am rambling here and I do not like to talk bad things about books. So um, again, have it with a pinch of salt. Uh, I gave Poisonwood Bible three stars, I think, two and a half to three stars. But actually all of these books are good, both that surprised me and that disappointed me. Um, they just were not that good that I wanted them to be in my life. But again, my life this year was strange and I liked strange books and I have strange experiences with my reading. So here you have. Um, next video I want to talk about my plans for 2023 and then about my favorite books of 2022. Stay tuned for the next video and I hope you'll have a cozy day today. Bye!